All right, yo, so uh, after some events that took place over the weekend, I think it's time we have a talk about what hot rodding is really all about. So here's your Tuesday morning tech tip with a twist from Publicity Speed Shop. Sweet, sweet. Should. Oh, oh, is door hit? Yeah, shut it. Break on. Break on. Brakes on. Hey, just for the record, I hate AutoZone. <laughs> Goddamn one day parts. Yeah, I never oh. trust those. guys I show you those clips and those pictures and all that because they depict to me what hot riding is all about all right they it's it's always the same old story no matter what I'm working on I'm trying to take whatever I got and make it the coolest thing possible right I mean a wide range right 64 Bel Air, 65 Chevy truck, 92 Nissan Hardbody, you know, XJ Jeep, different motorcycles, whatever I got. I want it, and I love them all. Yes, even the Hardbody, <laughs> for all different reasons, right? They all, something appeals to me in all of them. And I want to improve them, keep them on the road, whatever it might be, right? So, but if you notice with those pictures, there's a lot of struggling going on, right? You guys see on the channel, most of these channels that we're all watching, guys are struggling, right? And it ain't because they're not good mechanics. It ain't because they're buying junk. It ain't because what it, I mean, okay, some of us do buy some junk. But it's what hot rodding is, man. You know, you're trying to take whatever you got and make it the coolest thing possible. And on that road... You're going to hit some bumps, right? You're going to have bolt, bolts that are stripped or break or whatever. You're going to have more rust than you thought, especially when you're messing with older stuff, right? These are all going to happen. The car is not going to cooperate. Something that you had that sat there and was perfect and hadn't moved will break when you go to move it. Um, it's just what happens, right? So it, it's part of it. It's been a part of it forever. So... You guys heard the stories before, but like how I got into this, you know, in the cars and everything else, like a lot of us do, was my father, right? He was a mechanic back in the day, and then he also had, he had some buckets that he needed to, <laughs> he needed to get to work in, so he'd be up late working on them, and a lot of times I was out helping him. And then time progressed, he got, you know, more stable to where he had more reliable cars, and then I took over, driving the buckets, <laughs> and... I'm up till one o'clock in the morning because I go to work the next morning. You know, I got it. It just that's how I that's how I got. Luckily, I'm not in that place anymore. I put myself in that place quite often, but you know, I got the tundra. I go to work and then I come home and I mess with all these things and it's great, right? That's that's my American dream, right? But um, yeah, 
you, you know, you don't always have the coolest thing, right? I mean, look what we got here. We got a four-door Delta 88, you know? Arguably not a cool car. But everybody's got their own taste, right? You take this thing, you clean it up, rims, tires, get it running nice, maybe a nice exhaust. Maybe you got something, right? Put a little system in it, whatever, whatever you know, whatever floats your boat, you know? And you got something. You got you got something you're proud of, right? That's the end result. You want to be proud of it. So I remember like back, my dad would tell me stories, you know. He had a 64 Le Mans that uh what, 326, I think, with a with a power glide in it. Um, and then he, uh, his buddy wrecked a GTO. So he got the GTO dirt cheap, didn't have a cherry picker to, to, to pull the engine because he wanted that 389, but he could pull the heads off it and put it on that 326 Pontiac stuff. I'm telling you. So he did that. And I think that one had a 350 turbo in it or something. They swapped that, you know. Stuff he could do in the driveway without with just the minimal tools that he had. And he had himself a little screamer. You know, I think that Le Mans weighed 2,700 pounds. And here he had a 326 block with 389 GTO heads on it, four barrel, all that. He's probably a higher compression, throwing one more power than a 389 did. You know, and that's at least that was his story when he told it. You know, he was whipping everybody, you know. And uh, I don't know, we couldn't keep transmissions in the car so I forget something but he told me that story so many times that I was like I need a 64 Le Mans and I went and bought one he actually went with me out on Long Island City we picked it up took it to my uncle's house my uncle's like oh my god look at this right so it's just like that's you know and then I had a 64 GTO after that because it was instilled in me this is a cool car right so and, and, and a lot of it's just what you see right I remember as far back as I can remember we went, my dad took me to his cousin's shop. His cousin had a 32 coupe that he still got today, right? And I was like five, six years old at this point. It was this beautiful color blue. And it looked so many different ways over the years because his cousin, he had a hot rod shop and he would always kind of just rebuild it every couple of years. But I'd keep up with the times, but it was cool, you know? I haven't seen a car in years, but um, <laughs> I close my eyes, I see it like it was yesterday, you know? And it's just these, these, these. This is hot riding, guys. This is what it's all about. And and many times things don't go right, right? Just like things didn't go right with the Bel Air this weekend. Things didn't go right with the Le Mans this weekend. And guys, got news for you. Things might not have gone that well getting this thing in here too, right? It's just how it goes. I'm sure, my dad had many nights like that. Actually, I was <laughs> I was there for a few of them. I know it. I'm sure his cousin had the same. I'm sure it's just it's what we do, right? But we do it because we love it. You know, it started out for many of us as a necessity. And then it was just something, whether it reminds us of our youth or whatever it does. It's just cool, man. You know? So no matter what you got, if you got a Model A, you got a Le Mans, you got a... <laughs> beat up old Oldsmobile. It doesn't matter. Make it the coolest thing you can. But remember this. If you want to have the coolest thing in the parking lot, you're going to put in some work. Thanks for watching, guys.